Debbie Ice, we are back once again for more Outlander Talk. We just can't get enough of this show. And I still haven't recorded my recap of the finale with Paula, but we will get there, don't you worry. But in the meantime, I have a really special treat for you all. I've got Rachel Gopalas from She Knows. Welcome. Hey. <laughs> Robert, so good to join you. I know. We've been like chatting for so long now. It's so good to put a face to a name through this thing called Zoom. Oh. And... I am super excited to talk to you about it because, you know, we're both Outlander peeps. You, you, your recaps are like so detailed and so well done. Anybody who's watching this who hasn't seen them yet or read them, you need to get onto that like now and then come back. Um, but Rachel, before we do anything else, the finale of season six, I'm still getting over it. Tell me everything. What did you think? I thought it was amazing, but I'm, I'm mad. Like I, I think I said this, like, I can't take Jamie and Claire being separated again. Uh, like, is it going to be another 20 years? Because I don't need to see them when they're 120. I need to see them, like, now. Oh, man, I know. Like, oh, all right. I was getting cranky. I was getting cranky with, like, them ripping her away. And then he was somewhere else on the beach. I'm like, no. Nah. I know. when, the, Like, you know, I think he, Jamie got scooped, though, when they were, like, jump out of the car we just want to give you water i was like don't fall for that guy come on dude come on. what know. are you doing <laughs> but I, I know like it was a very it was a short season long episodes but very i'm still amazed that they got it done against all odds covid katrina being pregnant yeah um but they did it and they did a damn good job i know people want more i know there's a lot of unanswered questions i know the whole book wasn't done but what do you want, people? You can't look well, at your thoughts in the mouth. You've got to be happy. Yeah, I thought it was one of the strongest seasons since one. And I know there were very strong feelings that some people were like, oh, wasn't it, you know, as exciting? I've heard or I've heard some of that talk. But by and large, I think the fandom was very happy. I think with all of the things, I mean, they created a television show um, in COVID. And, and at a time when we didn't know if it was even safe to be around each other. And Katrina being pregnant, I mean, I, I told her that she deserves an award. The, the, everyone on that that cast deserves an award for this season. Um, I think it was phenomenal. My the best thing about it was even the stories that weren't Jamie and Claire were always linked back to Jamie and Claire, and I think they did that really well. That in previous seasons they didn't always do that, and that's where I think you know they are the anchor of the show. Um, yeah. So for me, I was very happy with almost every episode, I would say, did that so well. Yeah, I mean, we could talk all day about our season rankings because I've said it over and over again, but for me, season two was just like the ultimate. And that, because that's how I got into it, right? I didn't even really watch season one until way later when I was really? like, oh, I'm getting it. Yeah. You, so you I, watched season two before one? Yeah, I just went straight in. I didn't even see the, you know, the earth shattering finale of season one right i never even saw that stuff with the rape and all that oh, I'm straight into season two in france and i'm like, okay i'm loving this this is cool paul yeah. you were right i was wrong yet again and uh <laughs> um and then i was like okay i have to admit i'm being constructive i wasn't totally loving the jamaica season okay let's okay start. Um, but then season five, I just thought was phenomenal. And then now this season, I thought was really, really good as well. So yeah. we've got season, so much season five was great too. Yeah. I think, I think the finale of season five was so like diff well done, but very difficult, uh, material to adapt and very yes. difficult material. I imagine to act and to watch. And I think, oh, you know, it really rattled a lot of people. I mean, I, I think Sophie and I talked after that finale, like the morning after I saw it and I was just like. I, I didn't, I, I, it put me in a bad mood, I'll be honest with you, for like a week. But let's go back to season one. I mean, I started watching, them. I, I had a good friend tell me to start watching this show back in 2014. Wow. And I, I didn't at the time, and I'll, I'll tell you why. It's kind of a, a, a silly story. Well, it's not a silly story. So I, I, got, I ended up getting breast cancer in 2014. Wow. And I know that was such a plot twist I didn't prepare you for. Um, <laughs> so I was a little busy uh, getting treatment and everything. And then fast forward a few years later, I ended up writing my first article about my breast cancer kind of journey or whatever. And yeah. um, a friend's like book agent read it and called me right away and said, we want to represent you. Um, and so one of the reasons I just started out watching Outlander probably in 2018 or something or 2019, I can't remember. And uh, my book agent said, hey, can you start doing, you know, before we start pitching books and everything, I want you to do more writing, just more like 
you know, on your sites or whatever. And I happened to mention to my good friend at work that I had started watching Outlander. And I was like, do you want me to recap it? And she's like, what? I'd love that. She's like, I think our audience would love it. So, you know, our site doesn't do a lot of recaps like that. And um, I just started doing them and you know, the fandom, they're just so awesome and great. Um, and, uh, you know, I, they, they, you know, it was just so fun. It was like, you, it's like you interact with them and you watch it together. And that's one thing I think is really unique about this show is their audience. Yeah, totally. Like, I mean, we don't do a lot of recaps either. Like we did quite a few for like Game of Thrones, the really big um, shows we would yeah. do, but we, we count Outlander as that because of its fandom, because yeah. it really has a following. And we thought, well, at least people will watch these. And yeah. then unlike your very detailed recaps, which I just can't imagine how exhausted you must be after every season. <laughs> oh um, I was so but, happy that it was the finale this time. I know, right? Like, I just I, was like... We're going to miss it, but to be like, it's a lot of work and, it, and it's also really taxing because you've got to think about it and, and unpack it and talk yeah. about it. And so that's why I decided to just do mine really off the cuff brought I had Amanda Spears for the first couple of seasons then we brought on Paula um it's because it's nice just to have another perspective yeah, and yeah. yeah and I think like our little way in is like I have never read a page of the books ever I have no idea about the books and yeah. no disrespect to Diana Gabaldon uh, and Paula of course is the book nut um, oh she's read like, all of them okay oh, she's like totally all over it and I think she's read some of them twice okay um, so, I'm, a, I'm a combination of the two of are you, you? Yeah, well, so I watched the show first and then in between, because we had so much time, you know, between season five and season six, I was like, you know, let me, let me get some background and maybe I can, yeah. I have a few articles planned, like in the Stroutlander that I'm going to do about book scenes that I, I wish had made, made it to television. And, um, you know, I, so I jumped around, I haven't read them like cover to cover, I'm not Paula, but I jump around just to see like the background and, and it's so interesting. I think the way they've adapted it is great. You know, Jamie's character is very, um, he's a little more brutish in the books. Really? Yeah. Oh. Like there's some scenes that I was like, wow, they could not have put that on television. Um, like one of the things I think in the first season when he spanks and he punishes Claire, it says in the book, uh, he beat me within an inch of my life. And I was like, oh, wow. Not to say on TV it was any, it wasn't better per se, because it's still violent. Yeah. But um, I, I was just like, oh, that is a shocking line. But, you know, her books are, they're, you know, when did she write them? 25 years ago? Yeah. They're, they're right. iconic and they set up like such a great story. Um, so I do think the show does a, a fantastic job of, of doing yeah, something yeah. that, you know, some things are need to be updated for television. Absolutely. And it's this, it still gets some controversy and, and criticism because it's yeah. so rapey and because um, the way that some, it, some Sorry I laughed it. at that, but that's the only yeah. way to describe it. Does yeah, have I have no other way to describe it. And yeah. um, Paula gets really, I mean, I wish she was here today. She's at work today, but um, she gets really defensive of the show when people bring it up. And she, she hears the, the complaint, and mm -hmm. as do we all, but yeah. she says, you know, this is about a time and place where, this, where that was a very common thing to happen. And yeah. we, women were subjugated. They, and they yeah. have been for a very long time until actually quite recently. And if you believe Stotus, um, maybe even again. So, uh, oh, well, Let's, yeah. I do want to talk about that because I had talked to one of the cast members about this. I actually think um, we have to portray things like this because it still does happen. And I understand yeah. it's shocking to people and some people uh things that i saw something online someone's like oh it's misogyny porn i don't think it is i think there is misogyny and we have to show it um and obviously you don't want to be too gratuitous about it like anything uh -huh. but you know it's not it was not only common back then it's still common now we just don't we're we just don't like to talk about it um yeah. and i think we need to talk about it and one thing i want to say about scotus is i like how we had the finale. You and I are like, ah, oh, we're off the Outlander beat. We get a vacation. And I think my interview with Sam and Katrina dropped that morning on Monday morning after the finale. And then like three hours later, the SCOTUS thing came down and I was just like, which creates a lot of work for me because I, I do content at my yeah. company. And I'm like, yeah, huh, that's your wheelhouse. That was, that was a one hour vacation. Oh man. It's like, it was just like, no, nah, the, the world the world is telling you, you know, you're not allowed to relax. Um, not, not. But back down. But, <laughs> but it's like, 
you know, um, misogyny. I, I, okay, I, I, maybe this is a bit rich coming from a, a, a white guy from another country, but I'm just saying, like, I think from my perspective, uh, I, I, I still have a view on it. And the view is this is very real and we need to confront it. And yep. if we just keep hiding it and living in a utopia where there's all fairies and rainbows and unicorns, then what is, where does that really get us? And I think Outlander is, is one of those shows that just makes it very starkly clear that yeah. uh, women have been through the ringer for centuries and they still Ever. still have a way to go. So yeah. anyway. Yeah, no, I think I think it's really important. And I that's why I'm glad in season six that they took the time to show Claire suffering for the whole season. And I yeah. know that was upset some book readers because they're like, she would never kind of do ether. I don't know if that's how you say it. Yeah, um, but, but I was like, you know, she went through something so horrific that it's hard to even watch that episode. And now imagine being that person. So I, I think it was really good that they kept that as a through line throughout the totally. whole season. Yeah, she wasn't herself in season six at all. And no. can you blame her? Like, you know, trauma does some very interesting things to you. We've all been through something in our lives yep. where we can maybe think of how that would have affected our behavior. And even now, years later, and she probably will carry this like she's carried everything else um, for the seasons to come. And I, I really, really admire that about how the show is very open about it. Yeah. Um, let's talk about some of the highlights from season six. Yeah. I could spend another half an hour just raving about Sam Hewen. I won't do that because I look like a, totally like a total fan, but I just think he is <laughs> so underrated. Um, yeah. He burns through the screen uh, with the way that he carries this character, as yep. you say, different to the books. He brings his own, his yeah. own energy to it. What do you think about Sam? Uh, I think Sam is great. Um, you know, one of the... In one of my recaps, I did say the episode where Claire gets sick. Um, you know, there is a part of me that misses uh, fiery Jamie and the Jamie that uh, gets to emote a lot. And um, I think the way Sam plays him is is great how he's evolved. But sometimes, like, the one thing I missed in that episode is seeing Jamie kind of being distressed about the fact that she could could have very well died. And I felt like they... Um, to, to kind of go along with the mystery of did he and Malva hook up, which was not even something anyone who knows these two characters, there's no way. Even if he had drank like three bottles of whiskey, it still would not have happened. Um, yeah. And I think they went that angle uh, to have that mystery there. And I, I wish they had just gone, not done that. It still would have been powerful. Um, but I just think Sam, um, you know, Katrina gets a lot of stuff uh, for Claire, because Claire is very challenged, you know, each season. Um, and, and, you know, Sam had that in the earlier seasons, like with his, with the storyline with Blackjack Randall and everything. And I just would like to see two things. One, I do want to see Fiery Jamie, who came back a little bit in the finale. And I think we're going to see him in season seven when he's trying to save her. Um, but I do want more more stuff where he can show kind of the gamut of emotions I know Sam can do and that we've seen yeah. throughout the series. I think it's a fair comment because we've seen so much from him uh, from the finale of uh, season one. Um, there's just been so many moments where he has really impressed us with his range. This season that just passed, I felt it was actually really true. It just felt real to me as a man of a, of a certain age with a family, responsibilities, yeah. a household, you know, that kind of thing. And that's what related, I related to that because he's, there's a yeah. calmness, there's a, uh, I, I can't put it into words, but it's more like he, the, res, the responsibility seemed to weigh on Jamie. And I felt that was coming through his performance. And so that felt real to me, but on the beach in the finale, you're right. We see that fire again. Yeah. He realizes, okay, we need to put all that stuff aside because now the stakes are even higher and I have to actually fight now or I'm going to lose everything. And I hope yeah. that's what we end up in season. I think we saw like in his eyes, the red Jamie of, of yes. the seasons, which I loved. And I have to say to his credit, you know, there was some, some criticism I saw online that when Claire is finally revealing to him uh, about the ether, about seeing yeah. Lionel Brown, um, that he like didn't react. And I actually didn't feel that way at all. I thought like the way he played it, I think when your spouse who is always so put together and so strong, um, when she is unraveling, you have to be the strong one in that. 
Like, yeah. um, I feel like I remember something when Jamie got bitten by the snake, Claire said like only one of us can be um, scared at one point or another. And right That's now right. it needs to be. And I think he really hears her when, especially after a snake bite, um, he's like, oh, okay. I'm going to be the strong one now. I, I really, um, I'm so glad you rem reminded me of that because it just shows the strength, like masculinity is portrayed in so many ways in various shows. In this show, of course, we see a lot of rah-rah, uh, a bare-chested masculinity, which is fine. But yeah. Jamie, like, he's happy to let, um, uh, sorry, Katrina, Claire take the lead. He's happy to listen to her. Yeah. Um, and he's, he's also can be quite uh, reasonable and, and he thinks things through as a thinker. I've always called him a rough diamond. That yeah. is a, 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 that is an image of masculinity that I really appreciate seeing on TV. We don't get to see that nuance very often. So yeah, I just think the more we think about the way these characters are portrayed on this show, the more I start to really appreciate how deep it can actually get. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. I, that's such a great point because I think they do two things really well. They have, I mean, one of the reasons these characters were attracted to each other, that she ended up with someone from the 1700s is because he was progressive and he showed this kind of, yeah. he's multifaceted, you know, he's, there are qualities about him that he will cry with her. He does learn from her. He can admit he's wrong. Um, and, you know, I, I understand why so many people resonate towards him. Um, but, you know, at the other, the other thing, what did you just say that like just reminded me of something that I've now forgotten? <laughs> I know, we're both too tired. I was like, it was going to be such a good point. You were going to oh, be man. Okay, it might come back. It might come back. But what, while, you, what, I mean, also thinking about Katrina uh, and playing Claire, um, yeah. she probably spent, I'd say, half the season in this fog, which I thought was really realistic. And then, of yeah. course, things start to unravel using your terminology. Malva is the trigger for that. The ether of her visions tom christie who is um antagonistic but yeah. kind of pretty much has her back as well very complicated relationship there again Not nuance nuance galore yeah. um i really just think katrina ralph is an absolute superstar i i mean literally that the show uh the magic between these two actors cannot be, like, honestly, they're as important, I said this the other day, as the books. Like they're, yeah. the two of them are just magic together. And getting back to Katrina's portrayal of Claire, it's interesting, she was almost like walking through, like you can see in her physicality, she was just so broken. Yeah. Um, and even when she was being strong, Katrina played it so layered that you were like, oh, she's still so like, even walking right into the church for Malva's funeral, she just like the, the way physicality wise, she just looks smaller and everything. And you're just like, oh, this is a person who has been beaten by what happened to her, which she, sh not that she should have been, but like that kind of thing, it doesn't happen all the time. And it's brutal. And it's like something that you don't recover from in two episodes. Um, yeah. So I was really, I, I, you know, I'm a big fan of hers. I just think you know they should get all the awards like honestly I don't understand Man, it don't even get me started like yeah the Emmys I've just lost so much faith in in uh in Outlander's ability to get traction at the Emmys but you never know but um yeah. it doesn't I guess ultimately it doesn't really matter um because it doesn't. it's still... a fantastic show and awards kind of mean nothing yeah, sorry exactly um let's talk about Brie and Roger because I if I'm going to criticize season six and I guess there's only so much they could have done. Like I just didn't see enough of Brie and I felt like it, the, the Brie that we saw wasn't, didn't feel like it was even true to her, to be um, completely honest. What do you yeah, think? I felt like Brie's, um, Brie's scenes were very filler and I would yeah. say that she was the only one that didn't get kind of a standalone episode to shine. I will say, um, and you know, Roger in previous seasons, I definitely had some issues with his his character and I thought Richard does a great job playing him, but I was like, you know, they just did him such a disservice because it was hard to empathize with him. Season six, that changed. I like, I became a Roger fan. I was just like, oh my gosh, like he, this is how I wish he had been written from when he and Brianna got together. Um, and then, you know, they touched upon, uh, Brianna getting a storyline with the matches and trying to show her. Yeah, that was um, great. But then it just, I, I felt like they kind of maybe, and, and you know, 
again, credit to them for getting such fantastic episodes. And I know they had to truncate their season, but I just felt like she could have been developed a little more the same way that they developed Marcelie in season five. I think Brie could have shined a little, they could have put the spotlight on her a little bit more. Yeah, like when, um, you know, Claire is on death's door, I just feel like we're, yeah, I, I yeah. wanted to see more of Brie. And that's definitely not Sophie Skelton's fault. Um, no, no, no. And I, I've said this, like what I really would like to see is the, the appeal of the character of Rihanna is that she is the anchor couple's child. So besides the scene where they, in season four, where she and Jamie meet for the first time, and then they go hunting um, for honey. Or bees. Yeah, that was great. <laughs> um, they, that was such a beautiful scene. And it was like all we've gotten of just the three of them. I think they isolate Brianna and Roger too much to each other. Um, yeah. Not to like negate, like the family scenes with Jemmy were so cute. Um, mm -hmm. the haircut and the lice and everything. But uh, I do think to build Brianna's character to the level that it should be at or and could be at, they need to have her in scenes with her parents having those family moments that they missed out on. You know what? That's actually spot on. I, it never really occurred to me, but now you're saying that, we need yeah. more of that. We need, we need her with Jamie and Claire because that's who she is. I mean, yeah, we need more of it. I hope we get more of that. Yeah. Um, speaking of Roger... And as you've mentioned, I know you've had some constructive stuff to say about the Roger yeah. character in the past and how you really um, warmed to him in season six. Because I'm kind of the opposite, although I didn't really have an issue with him in season six. I've always been a Roger fan. Um, I think I relate to him the most. Okay. And it's not, it's not about me, but of course, subjectively, when you're watching the show, you do yeah. um, form connections with characters. Um, I love that he was out of his depth. Um, I love that he's a thinker, a deep thinker. Um, yeah. He doesn't have that much confidence, but he's got some charm. And I felt like I really respect that kind of portrayal. And of yeah. course, I have this huge crush, uh, man crush on Rick Rankin. Um, but uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, and I, I really, I loved his trajectory in season six. I loved yeah. the scenes with the, the, the other woman in the family that he was helping and how yeah. he was like, you can't do this. And Paul yeah. Ryan. He was just so pure. He was like, I'm just yeah. a I'm just trying to help. Thinking. Um, I, I thought it was hilarious that when she talks to him about it, he like goes over there to like pick up his chimney toolkit and she's like, stay for dinner. And he like, he's like, I, okay. I don't want to be rude. I, don't I know. Rude. He's like, um, I, I will I say, totally get that. I, there was only, there's a small window where Roger bothered me. And I'll tell you what that was. I think when he, when he first came on and he helped find Jamie and he was like very supportive to Claire and Brie loved him. I thought, I was like, oh, this is such a sweet guy. I can see, you know, why Claire likes him for Brianna, why Brianna, um, you know, is drawn to him. But then when they, I think this is the beginning of season four, when they got them together and he was like, I won't sleep with you until you marry me. That's where he kind of lost me for a bit. And where mm. I, I was like, excuse me, sir. I was like, it, it just, was. Seems, yeah, I was like, uh. pardon me, Roger. <laughs> <laughs> um, so then he, and, and then, you know, I, I would say, and we can rank that, but rank the seasons in a, in another video. But you know, season four for me was was the toughest, I would say, because yeah. I think there was too much time spent on, um, you know, the terrible stuff that happened to Roger, and it took away from the Jamie wow. and Claire stuff. I don't think they wove it together strongly enough for me. Yeah, yeah, and I'm surprised that he can sing again. I didn't think that he was going oh, yeah. to. Oh yeah, that yeah. was a real, they just scooped us on that. I was like, oh, he can sing? Yeah. When, I thought he never sings again. Kevin. Yeah. I, sorry, my oh, Kevin. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I totally, yeah, I, yeah. That was a bit of a puzzle for me, but that's it. I kind of let it go. But I hear what you're saying. Yeah, that stuff about that, I won't sleep with you until you marry me. We were all like, hmm? Say yeah. What? <laughs> um, what are you doing? What's happening here? I don't understand. It's just, yeah, yeah. I was like, you were so nice. And then, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that stuff where Roger is um, helping the, uh, I've forgotten her, the character's name. Um, and Oh, Amy, uh, am I thinking of the actress, McCallum, Mrs. McCallum? Or something? Oh, yes, Ms. that's McCallum. the one. Yeah. But it actually opened up a lot of discussions between Paula and I sitting on the couch watching it because I, she knows that that's something that I will probably do. I'd be like, yeah, I'm just trying to help. I'm trying to not want to be rude. Yeah. And she's like, no, that's not how it works. You need to get home with your wife and your kids and not worry about other people. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I but totally I think back that. then also there was this, you know, th they were very particular about not making it seem like 
yes. being illicit was going on. Whereas in our uh, times right now, I feel like, especially coming from Indian culture, like all of my parents' friends, like they're all hanging out and my dad would go help someone. Yeah. Uh, she would be, he would absolutely go help a friend who's widowed or something. He can't fix yeah. a chimney, so that would be weird. But um, yeah. he would he would do, you know, he'd be helpful. And my mom is not, just the way I think we are, we're raised in this kind of century, I don't think we're as threatened by it. You know, no. we're not like, no, 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 oh my no. God, she was fixing her chimney. <laughs> oh yeah, like, yeah, uh, exactly, exactly. So. I think, yeah, I think all overall we had a good season. We only have to wait for them to um, finish season seven. So who knows when that will be out. Well, but I want to actually... 16 episodes. So I yeah, think it's going to be about a year. That's a lot. Like, that's a, that's a pretty huge undertaking. Um, it's going to keep maybe them we'll Maybe we'll do a, a per, we'll do season one reviews, season two. We'll get them through Droughtlander. <laughs> that's a good idea. Let's do that. I do that. In the meantime, I want to look back. And I always ask this question when I have um, special super fan guests on and recap this, <laughs> and that is favorite episodes. Now, I was interviewing someone the other day who I haven't um, premiered that video yet, and she was quite rightly saying, oh, she puts the wedding aside and she puts A Malcolm aside. And I would say you should even put Faith aside. But I mean, a lot because a lot, a lot of people love Faith. Yeah. And then she came up with a great other episode of which I, which I won't spoil. What, how do you, when someone asks you, what's your favorite episode? What do you normally say? Um, uh, for me, I love the episode season one, uh, I think episode nine, The Reckoning, where Jamie yeah. starts in their first fight by the river. I, that was like when I was like, oh, this show is so good. These two together are so good. I get why people are kind of obsessed with this. Um, and I just was like, it was. The, I think when they were fighting, my jaw dropped and I was like, I was like, oh, wow. Uh, and that, in that moment, I was like, oh, this is, this is like, this is the couple to watch on this show. Like these, the, I, I, I really think they have more chemistry than any other on-screen couple. And um, I thought the way that episode was like laid out in terms of showing this couple clearly falling in love, one of them trying to deny it, and then realizing that they can fight like this and still be, that's how you know the strength of it. Cause they could come oh, out yeah. of something like that. Yeah. Um, and then when you see like how much they care for each other, it's just, it, it was like really wonderful. I thought it was well done. And then of course, like, you know, the, the way they dealt with that controversial scene, the spanking, I personally, I thought they did it well. I thought they adapted it well. And I, um, you know, one of my friends said she didn't like uh, when she watched it um, during, she, she got COVID in 2020 and she watched Outlander and then she couldn't, right. she was like, it reminds me of COVID. And I was like, okay. Right. Um, but she'll often, she's like, what happens for the rest of like, she wanted me to recap seasons two through five. And so I was like, <laughs> eh, why don't you go online and look up my recaps? Yeah, just read um, but, uh, you know, I, I think they handled that well. And it was just like such a fun episode too. It's just like, you know, mm. it was action oriented. And that's what I liked about this finale is that, in the last two episodes of this season were funny. They were, um, they somehow got humor amongst all this, like, <laughs> like, an like this anxiety that every single yeah. character went through. Yeah, you're right. They really walked that tightrope with that tone um, and, I, and it didn't feel forced and it felt kind of natural. Yeah. And it, yeah, you're right. I, I didn't even think about the funny stuff, but it was, it was actually, there was a moment where I was chuckling. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, what, I'm gonna what get, was I'm your gonna what's your favorite? Well, episode? I always mention Untimely Resurrection in season two because um, it, I just you know how you have the light bulb moment for anything, any part of your life. Yeah. That was for for this show. It was when um, Claire and Jamie are in those beautiful costumes and they're in uh, the the gardens in Versailles, and then uh, I guess you could call him Jack Black walks out, and yeah. um, the, the way that it was shot and the camera yeah. turns around and it's slow mo a bit. I was just like, what am I watching? Where yeah. have I been? And that was the, yeah, it was just completely and utterly with me. So simple. Such a yeah, simple it was thing. so luxurious too. Like the way they oh, film that, like man. so beautiful. I just wanted to say that you called Black Jack, Jack Black. And did the, I? Like, okay. you did. And the He's whole time. School I, of Rock. So that's a different I, know, I just picked your Jack Black instead of Black Jack. And I was like, Can you no, imagine? that would have been a that different be a funny scene be a whole different show i don't think it would quite work i think Tobias. i don't know, I, don't know. I think jack black could really black maybe black season seven <laughs> um you know meryl davis and the rest of the team you want to get onto that maybe get yeah. some casting um <laughs> well look i think that's that's a pretty good wrap up i'm i 
we could be here for hours, but of course, you know, it's, it's getting late over there on the East Coast. And uh, so I'm going to uh, say goodbye for now. But Reshma, what's your final thought to leave us with before we wrap up? Uh, final thoughts are, well, A, I'm glad you and I get a little break from recapping and this and that, though you haven't done your recap yet. So No, I still haven't. One of us is done. done. We're getting um, there. We're getting yeah, there. But I'll write you guys some good stuff. We'll cover, we'll cover it in some way. Um, I mean, I just am so impressed with the, the actors that put together and the crew and the writers who put together that show. Um, I do hope, I saw today in the news that they cast William, Jamie's son. I don't know, nice. did you see that online? That no, happened. I did not see that. Um, so that, that's happening. And so I'm really interested to see uh, what they do in season seven, but I'm also interested to see if they're going to continue the show. Like, what do you think? Do you think they should wrap it in? seven or do you think there's longevity that's a really good question because i know some people who say oh it's time for them to start thinking about ending this and setting them all free so they can move on to other things because they i mean katrina's career is going to this skyrocket particularly after belfast yeah. sam is also going to he's got so much going on in his career is this the time for them to cut their losses? Not, sorry, that's not the right, to just move on from this amazing show that's given them so much? Yeah. Or do they have a couple more seasons to squeeze out? My my inclination is that they will they probably will end it. Um, but, I mean, I've been so wrong so many times that... Yeah, after, yeah. yeah. I, I feel like... You- I feel like when you do 16 episodes, that's what they did for the first season. It's a nice yeah. ending. But I will say this. I think if, if Stars is smart... They should figure out how to continue it in a way that Sam and Katrina can do other projects. Yeah. Um, and whether it's, you know, letting, I'm hoping the two of them each get to direct this year so they get to continue growing in this, in their roles. Um, but also I think they could easily do a truncated season, six episode. I mean, I feel like HBO does stuff like that. Netflix does um, yeah. to continue the story because Diana Gabaldon is writing these books and where else are you going to see Katrina Balfe and Sam Hewen uh, on television for an hour each week? I mean, that's that's some great material. That's like a movie it every is. week. And, you know, so I'm proposing continuing, but doing like truncated seasons, truncated. six episodes. Yeah, they could do that. They could do TV movies. They could yeah. do like a, a two, uh, two-parters. They could do whatever they want. But they've got to yeah. probably make the yeah. most of this before no disrespect, but before Katrina and, and Sam and the rest of the cast get super old and then it's kind of not really going to work. Uh, <laughs> so that's not going to happen for a very long time, though. So it's okay. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> so, yeah, all right. Well, Reshma, thank you so much for your insight. Everybody, make sure you check out Reshma's recaps at She Knows. Um, yeah. And where can they find you on Twitter? I think it's just at Reshma Kapowers, right? Well, it's at Racing Bull. I don't know. That's don't right. Know. A friend Racing of mine. Bull. That's yeah. I love that. <laughs> it's like Racing Bull. Uh, Racing Bull, or I'm Racing Go on Instagram, and you can find all the recaps on She Knows, and we do some videos too. I had video for She Knows and everyone, so yeah, check those out too. Yeah, check them out. Check out our corporate cousins over at She Knows, and uh, obviously everybody. You can find us at um, Gold Derby at Robert Lucuria. Um, you can find Paula as well at Paula Lucuria um, uh, on Twitter. And uh, hopefully we'll be doing a recap soon. We've both been struggling with the flu on and off. We keep giving it to each other. So hopefully this weekend we will record it. And <laughs> then um, maybe Rachel, we can come back in a couple of months and just do like a out of the blue what are we looking forward to chat or perhaps maybe even talk about some other shows? I mean, there are other shows out there. Yeah. Maybe I'll have you on my podcast. So I, what I think we should do just to, cause Droughtlander is going to be long is yeah. we'll do some, we'll go, we'll go back in time. No pun intended here. We'll do season one, season two, season three, four, and we don't have to do five and six. I already recapped them enough. <laughs> True. Oh, that's a good idea. You're on um, everybody okay. stick with us and we'll see you soon. All right. Bye guys. Bye.